So let's sort of summarize a little bit of the information we had on that chart on the previous uh, page uh, and video. So curves are also called continuous. So I didn't mention that. I'm just going to put this chart back under here. A continuous curve just means that you don't need to lift your pencil to draw it. So I would be drawing it this way. I should actually use a pen or pencil. So doing that. In other words, there's no asymptotes. Okay, it's also a curve, not a rigid V shape like an absolute value. So it's a curve. And uh, again, continuous means there's no asymptotes. You're not lifting your pencils. Okay, graph will have at most n minus one turns where n is the degree. So again, that's if it's cubic, then it could change directions twice. So we say two turns. The function has at most n real roots, roots meaning x-intercepts. So for example, a cubic function has at most three roots. It could have two or one. Generally speaking, the graph of a cubic function is shaped like a sideways S. That might help people. The graph of a cortic, cortic function has that W shape, or if A is positive, in other words, if the leading coefficient is positive. If it's negative, then it's been reflected over the x-axis, so that's why the shape is now more of an M-type shape. All right, the end behavior. I put a star beside this because this is probably these the, the part you're going to want to read back at again. So in the odd degree, if the leading coefficient is positive, the graph falls to the left and rises to the right. So that's that end behavior. It falls left, rises right. That happens when it's odd, okay? If the leading coefficient is negative because it's a reflection, the graph now rises to the left, falls to the right. I tend to just remember one and then remember for the negative, it's the opposite situation, okay? So if the leading coefficient is negative, the graph rises now to the left, falls to the right in this question.